Can you see me? <laughs> Loyal club members, friends, when you are leaving this boat in Barcelona, you are all club members. And we thought it would be only appropriate this evening, on the last sailing of the Sea One Pride, to include everybody. And I think Deborah was absolutely correct when she says, we, I think she said, there is only one reason for seeing such a high return rate, that is because, I strongly believe, that is because of past good experiences. You are not necessarily only, only coming back again because of the product, but because of the good crew members. They are personal. We have always asked them to be personal, but still on a little distance. <laughs> but still personal. I'm thinking. And I'm going to tell you one thing. Most of you know it already because I happened to be on this boat while we were in Germany building her back in 1988. Seeing her growing and now having her on the last sailing before she's leaving the Seaborn Company. I have gone through some records and I would like to share with you. I know I'm going to repeat myself. We had people also on the last cruise, and I'm going to say very much the same. Please forgive me. I'm only a human being. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. oh. <laughs> the Seaborn Pride. The keel was laid December 1st in 1987 in Bremerhaven at the Seebeck Raft. She was handed over to Seaborn November 18th, 1988. We did a crossing from Bremerhaven to Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale was meant to be the starting point of the first cruise of the Seaborn Pride. That never happened. Simply because on that crossing we had very, very ugly weather. So we were five days delayed coming into Fort Lauderdale. Actually, I can share with you the bow of this boat. All the paint was gone. So we had contractors coming in, helping us to repaint and make her white and shiny. We sailed with the German contractors to Acapulco, where they disembarked, and we got cleaning people to assist us to make her ready for the approach into San Francisco. December 19th, we are in San Francisco, and Shirley Temple Black, or Shirley Temple at that time, she was on the dock. It was raining, it was pouring down. But she christened her and called her Seaborn Pride. We started the first Seaborn cruise out of San Francisco, December 20th. We had people being with us to Fort Lauderdale. I think we had something like 60 or 70 guests on board. That was the early beginning. They left us in Fort Lauderdale. 
And a few months after, we had the first couple returning. And you know what happened? We had the first club party. Yeah. It was one couple and seven officers. And we were so excited. That was the first club party we had on the Seaborn. I'm going to ask you, sweetheart, what do you think Seaborn means? If I ask you before, don't say that. Can I ask you before? Please say something. Say something. <laughs> Family. Family, that is a good try, but that's wrong. What? Yeah, but no, it, it's a very good answer. I know you know it. What do you think Seaborn means? To me, it means perfection. Perfection, that, I like it, but it's also wrong. But I'm going to tell you what it is. This company, when the Norwegian owner started this company, he wanted to make something very, very different to the, to the cruise industry. He wanted to offer a product for pampering and pampering and wellness and enjoyment. Pampering was the product. Yeah, that's also wrong. Yes. <laughs> so the first name of this company was Signet Cruise Line. Can you believe it? Signal this one. Signal Pride, Signal Spirit, Signal Legend. There happened to be a tugboat company with a signal. So we had to change it. And Seaborn came up. And that is when you have the chance now. Say, what is Seaborn? What does it mean? Going to sea, also wrong. Seaborn means take away the three first letters and focus on B or U N and you're having the, an old English word for a conqueror, a kingdom at sea. So seaborn means kingdom at sea, a conqueror at sea. March 30th, you were all on board and we started on the last sailing for this wonderful lady. And we are sailing into Barcelona, April 12th. That is the <laughs> final journey, historical journey of the Seaborn product. And she goes to Winstar and she will be renamed Star Pride. I think you all will be joining me when we are saying we wish her nothing but happy and successful sailings and that the guests joining the Star Trek will be having a good time on board the program. I know I promise to be short, but I have something more. I would like to introduce to you what we offered in the beginning. We had some menu covers that were a piece of art. And we also had some postcards I also like to share with you. I will sit down so you can see. These menu covers, they became collector's items. Designed and made by a Norwegian artist. You see the ships and you have the story of what they did. They have been everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> the conquerors. Oh. <laughs> Some of you may remember these menu covers. The poster we had. Friends, Deborah did some promotion. 
I promise not to do promotion, but I can't stop it. Being a good Norwegian, we are having the legend during the last sailing on the coast of Norway, I believe that is this summer. I would like to take you with me on a cruise on the coast of Norway. Just sit down and follow. Have you heard about the composer Edward Grey? You are on a small boat, low in the water. Beautiful scenery, calling small places. And we're coming into fairy tale land. How many of you heard about the trolls? The trolls living inside the mountain, his father troll, mother troll, and all the troll kids. And the troll kids, they're getting excited as they see this beautiful ship blowing water. And they are saying to Father Troll, Papa, what is that? And Father Troll says, Oh, my son, that is the sea born ship. When you are planning your next cruise, go sea born. <laughs> Thank you. Club members, thank you so much for your loyalty, for the great love that you have for the Seaborn Pride, that you, all of you, have specially come on this journey, on the last voyage, to pay your tributes with the Seaborn Pride, and be a part of this historical moment, in saying farewell to our Iron Lady, who started it all. What is Seaborn Pride? According to the Morning Call, published in November 1988, Warren S. Titus, who was currently then the president of the new Seaborne Cruise Line, he said, and I quote, she is to be the top of the market ship designed to appeal to the most discriminating and experienced leisure travelers whose expectations are the highest. We are striving to present a quality of cruising that will have no equal. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe she has done exactly that. Over the past 25 years, she has been home She's been family. She's been our mother who has kept us well fed. She's kept us warm in our beds and decently clothed, transporting us safely around the globe, been a welcoming place to escape from our stressful lives and given us precious memories that we will forever cherish. But in all honesty, it's not just the idea that we are losing the ship itself, because the pride, as special as she is, she is just a ship. What has really made the Pride so special are the crew members that have given the Pride the wonderful culture and character that she has to this day. The crew members who remember you, who welcome you, and who, happy, who are happy to serve you. We are losing all her crew members that she has carried over the years. And although the crew will still be with Seaborn, we will never again be under the same roof sailing the seas on the Pride, a place we once called home. In saying that, there are a few staff members who too have made special arrangements to be with us this evening for this voyage. And although not all of them have been with the Pride from the, set, from the first sailing, they have however contributed and been important roles in encouraging their teams to be the best they can be in delivering the five staff's product that is unparalleled. Unfortunately, I cannot call up all the crew involved, but may I welcome on stage the officers who have overseen the operations in making the Pride a success that she is today. If we can welcome our well-known destinations manager, Carol Fry. <laughs> Executive housekeeper, Linda. Restaurant manager, Richard. Assistant maitre d', Pietro. Samili, the waiter. <coughs> Bar manager, Roland. Sommelier, Joe Kaiser. Bartender, Nelson. Welcome back on stage, three special Pride family members. 
Upon conversation with this particular club member, I had asked her, why Seaborn? She said that she had found Seaborn in an advert in a Travel and Leisure magazine and had decided to give it a go from all the good comments and ratings that was advertised. With that, Seaborn became a part of her life and her comment was that she loved the fact that every time that she comes onto a seaborne ship, she knows that she is coming back to crew who know her so well. Crew that are friends that can take care of her uh, to their best of their abilities. Our Most Sailed Days Award for 1,537 days wow. on seaborne, of which 1,047 days since 1993 on the seaborne pride alone. Oh, Lorraine Thompson. Wow. Captain Eric Lant Anderson, Cruise Director. Your Cruise Director David E. Green. And the person we're all very familiar with, Winter. Tonight is a very, very special night. I never, never before experienced a club evening like this. And it gave me an opportunity to recognize loyalty. Like the Buddha said, they should all be recognized. But we cannot do that tonight. The, the evening will be so long. But I have three people I'd like to recognize tonight for their loyalty. The first one. Are you having a second one? The otro. I admire you. I saw you last night. What a when you have to take a walk. <laughs> Thank you for your loyalty to all the years. How many years now? Fifty. Wow. 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 Then we're having one of you all now. <laughs> Guess who it is? <laughs> I mean, I have a plan, I'm going to recognize you a little later on. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm having a person called Nelson. <laughs> Is there anyone of you not knowing Nelson? <laughs> Try to smile. <laughs> Nelson, as a small token for your loyalty. Thank you. Club members, just a few statistics for this voyage. Out of 110 passengers on board, 94 of you are club members coming from across 15 different nationalities. Your combined days from all of you here tonight in this room comes to a total of 17,714 combined on I was going to say that if the captain was in a good mood and if you could calculate the years, he'd give you a free cruise on the Seaborn Pride. But I think that is not going to happen this, this time. Now. So you'll have to come onto the spirit or the legend, maybe he'll give it to you then. But it comes to 48 years in total. 48 years. That is amazing. 
I've done a little bit of research this cruise on a few club members uh, just to find out who's been sailing mostly on the Pride and um, I just would like to recognize a few guests this evening that have done about 250 days and over on the Seaborne Pride alone. If I can welcome you on stage if you can come and collect a gift and get a photo with the crew. May I call up? Uh, 250 days, starting from 1992 on the Seaborne Pride, Mrs. Alison Salveson. Miss Genevieve Porti. Club, I should say, personnel, would you please welcome to the stage at this time, yes indeed, the lovely Debbie Hanson. But here goes. Roses are red, violets are blue. Seaborn Pride, the world will not be the same without you. You were the start to it all, you housed the best crew that were sailing the seven seas. The guests, they kept returning and bringing their friends. That Seaborn had to build another to make three. And even then, their comments grew, as did the numbers too. That we had to build yet another three, all because of you. Seaborn Pride, I never believed that day would actually arrive. I wish you could never have left our side. You made us feel at home, giving us a safe, warm, belonging feeling that no one can deny. O oh, Iron Lady of the Sea, look around. Can you see? All your loving guests, who you have cared for throughout the years, they have come to pay their respects and bid a fond farewell to thee. Windstar has seen a great potential in you, that she will invest to give their very best and make you look like brand new. But, may you always remember that, yes, Roses will be red, and violets will never stray from blue. Our beloved seaborne pride, no matter which tide you may ride, or which flag you will hold up high, know that in our heart of hearts, you will always remain our beloved seaborne pride. Before I start, 
start, let me just get business out of the way. I would like to remind you all about your 5% additional savings that you can secure whilst booking on board with myself. It does hold for four years, it's fully refundable, and it does go back to your travel agent 100%. So please make sure that you do take advantage of this before you do leave, as I'm sure all of you know that um, if you don't do it when you're shore side, by shore side, it won't be applied. We still have the 2014-2015 brochures available outside at the Shore Excursions office. So if you do not have the brochures for next for this year, coming into April next year, please feel free to take them from the, the Shore Excursions. I also do have itineraries available for the summer of 2015. They're not published in the brochures, but they I do have them and they are available for booking. So if you are interested in booking for next year, please come and see me. Ladies and gentlemen, I cannot stress to you, to, to you enough. We are three ships short next year. That is 600 guests will not be able to sail on a seaborne ship next year. The itineraries for next year are out on the internet and they are ready for booking. And I can tell you now that some of the sailings are being booked up. So come and see me so that we can secure a spot for you for next year. We do have the Odyssey, the Sojourn and the Quest. There are 450 passengers. There are classed as small ships. And whatever you cannot find on this ship, they will have on the bigger ships for you. So please do give them a try. I promise you, you won't regret it. <coughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, it has finally come to that time that I thought would never actually arrive. This is officially the final club night for the Seaborne Pride. May I please welcome on stage the master of the vessel, Captain Eric Lant Anderson. <laughs> My captain, you, who were here with her from day one. It is now time. Her final trip is almost done. May you ring her bell and blow her horn. Give her that special salute just that one last time. For her life once known as Seaborn Pride, that kingdom has come. Thank you. Club members, on behalf of the captain, officers, staff and crew, I would like to say thank you again so much for the love you have for the Pride and for being a part of our Seaborne family. We hope to see you again in the near future on one of our sister ships and again I cannot stress to you, please come feel free to see us on one of the bigger ships. Like I say, you won't regret it. And if I can pass over to David to make a special toast for the end. This is supposed to be a celebration. We must not debate the ugly, and I don't like to do that. So, ladies and gentlemen, let us raise our glasses. Here's to all the Seaborn Club members, wherever they may be. We raise this glass to thee and to them. So let us raise high and mighty. Cheers to them all and to you. Cheers. Thank you, Deborah. Whoops, excuse me. Just one little word. We have been blessed with nice weather all the way since we left St. Thomas. It's still nice. The uh, forecast for the next days still good, but there is something north of us. So we have made a little deviation. We were going more to the south to make it as smooth as possible. But I'm going to ask you, please, before you go into bed tonight, if you're having certain things on the desktop that you really treasure, don't allow it to fall down. It will not happen, but better safe and solid. Thank you. Why not, Kathy? We came in that way, we might as well go out that way as well. <laughs> Captain Eric Anderson and your free sales representative, Deborah Hanson. Well, ladies and gentlemen, after you've had such a wonderful dining experience, I hope you will join me right here for that wonderful tribute to the man of great music, the tribute to the music of Mr. Nat King Cole. At 9.45, until then, let's have a wonderful evening and bon appetit. Thank you. <laughs>